Hi. In this video, I would like to talk to you about DNA supercoiling and how it's relevant to the alkaline lysis mini prep. Because of the specific focus of this video, I will not be discussing any of the technical details of positive or negative supercoils or which enzymes are involved. So I will not be focusing on how you go from this to this. Instead, I will do my best to keep things as simple as possible and to just give you a better idea of what it means for a DNA molecule to be supercoiled and how that could impact what you're seeing during an alkaline lysis mini prep. So let's begin by using these rubber bands to represent the two complementary DNA strands. These strands would of course be wound around each other to give us that familiar double helix, which is difficult to do with a closed band. And just to make things easier to see, I will color in one of these bands. So we will have one strand in kind of a yellow-orange, the other one will be more of a, a green color. Now we have a more easily recognizable double helix. I've cut the band to make it easier to do this and to also help me introduce supercoils in a moment. So what is supercoiling? Well, simply put, it is a method of compacting DNA by adding more twists to the double helix. So let me just open up this clip and start doing that. So, by adding more twists, so I'm taking the two strands and I'm twisting them more, adding more twists. By doing this, I'm actually introducing stress on the helix. And so the stress can be relieved by having the DNA molecule loop over itself. This is called a writhe. Now, as I continue to add more twists, I introduce more and more stress. And if I release this, you'll notice that the writhe is much more noticeable and there are more loops. So, let me just add some more and then we'll turn this into a, back into a circular molecule. As you can see, I keep on adding more and more of these and we're getting a much more compacted sort of form. Okay, so let me just take off this and I will put these two together to ends together and close it off so that we have what would be otherwise a circular molecule that now has a conformation that is very much supercoiled. Okay, so again, it is a circular molecule, but because of all the extra stress that's placed on the DNA, helix, it actually forms this very tightly packed sort of molecule. Now again, this is in contrast to what you would have with just an open circular form, which is much, much larger. Okay, so again, it's a way of packaging DNA. Now, the way that this is relevant to alkaline lysis is this. During the denaturation step of the alkaline lysis, what happens is that this two-stranded DNA, double-stranded DNA, is going to be separated, it's going to be denatured. And so, the strands here 
are going to separate from one another. So you can see the green strand separating from the yellow. This will happen. Now as it does that, you'll notice that it's introducing more stress. There's a limit to how far apart I can pull these because they will always want to go back together. Because this is such a small molecule, there's a limit to how much stress can be added to the rest of the helix. So when you are separating strands in one place, you're introducing more stress in other parts of this molecule, which causes even more supercoiling there. And that's going to be relieved as soon as these strands are allowed to come back together. Now, this is a little bit different in bacterial genomic DNA because it's a much larger molecule compared to the plasmid. And so there is more space, there is more DNA to which this torsional stress can be transmitted. And so it's easier for those strands to separate and there isn't as much of a force pushing them back together again. So when you add the solution 3, when you add your neutralizing solution and the DNA is allowed to go back to its annealed conformation, then the plasma DNA will be able to go back to its natural state much more easily because there's already, because of this torsional stress, there's already a force pushing these two strands back together. And also these two strands did not get a chance to separate quite as far apart as they would in genomic DNA. So for example, if this is our genomic DNA, and we have two separate strands, then there's a much larger area that is involved in trying to find a partner. So it's a larger area trying to find its complementary strand. And so it's much more difficult for these different areas to find one another in the genomic DNA because there's just so much more DNA to search through. And so it's more likely to just not anneal properly and to clump and then to be precipitated out during the next step. So hopefully from this you can see why it is easier for plasmids to reanneal and remain soluble during an alkaline lysis mini prep compared to bacteria's own genomic DNA and why an alkaline lysis mini prep is a great method for extracting just a plasmid and not anything else. Thank you.